Take a look. Take a look, isn't it? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الصفا والمروة من شعائر الله فمن حج البيت أو اعتمر فلا جناح عليه أن يطوف بهما ومن تطوع خيرا فإن الله شاكر عليم إن الذين يكتبون تمون ما أنزلنا من البينات والهدى من بعد من بعد ما بيناه للناس في الكتاب أولئك يلعنهم الله ويلعنهم اللاعنون إلا الذين آمنوا وإلا الذين تابوا وأصلحوا وبينوا فأولئك أتوب عليهم وأنا التواب الرحيم إن الذين كفروا وماتوا وهم كفار أولئك أولئك عليهم لعنة الله والملائكة والناس أجمعين خالدين فيها لا يخفف عنهم العذاب ولا هم ينظرون وإلهكم إله واحد لا إله إلا هو الرحمن الرحيم إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار والفلك والفلك التي تجري في البحر بما ينفع الناس وما أنزل الله وما أنزل الله من السماء من ماء فأحيا فأحيا به الأرض بعد موتها وبث فيها من كل دابة وتصريف الرياح والسحاب المسخر بين السماء والأرض لآيات لقوم يعقلون ومن الناس من يتخذ من دون الله أندادا من دون الله أندادا 
يحبونهم كحب الله والذين آمنوا أشد حبا لله والذين آمنوا أشد حبا لله ولو يرى الذين ظلموا إذ يرون العذاب أن القوة لله جميعا وأن الله شديد العذاب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى من استنى بسنته واهتدى بهديه وصار على نهجه إلى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today I've been waiting for this name for a while I delayed it delayed it to keep the suspense but finally today we're going to talk about the name of Allah Al-Wadud the loving and the beloved and uh, today's recitation was longer than usual and you will find out why inshallah as the lesson goes on al-wadud in the arabic language wadda ya waddu to desire something to want something in the quran this word is used very frequently who can give me some examples ya waddu ahaduhum law yu'ammaru alfa sana waddat طائفة منه ها ود كثير منه عفوا ود كثير من أهل الكتاب لو يردونكم ما شاء ودوا لو تدهنوا فيدهنون in the Quran Allah uses this word very frequently there are many words in the Arabic language used for love al wud in Arabic is not just love to want something but it's to want something with a strong sense of hope that you're going to get it. And so this word is used in the Quran to describe the relationship between male and female, between a married couple. Allah says, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً So this word is a very exclusive word for love. It's a type of love which involves a yearning, a desire, a want to be with the one that is loved. And in the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about his love, he uses this as a name, Al-Wadud, which follows the Arabic exaggerated form, Fa'ul, which means the one who is extremely loving and extremely desiring to be with the ones he loves. Can you imagine that for a moment? That Allah may want to be in the company of you and me. That Allah may love us to the extent he misses us, that he, he wishes to see us. He wishes for us to join in the company of the gardens of paradise. This is the connotation of Al-Wadud. When Allah names himself Al-Wadud, this is not a love for everybody. Now this is something to break some people's hearts. Allah's name Al-Wadud is referring to a very special kind of love for a very special kind of people. Remember that. Allah in the Quran uses another word to describe the attribute of love. But not as a name, but as a, as a verb, as an action. Anybody know what other words he used in the Quran to describe his love? Al-Mahabba. Al-Mahabba. Who can give me some examples in the Quran? Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabin. Allah loves those that frequently return to him in repentance. Who can give me a negative example? Something, somebody Allah doesn't love. Inna Allah la yuhibbu kulla mukhtalin fakhur. Allah does not love those people who are proud and arrogant. Someone had another example? The same one? I have missed you, Shaykh. Where have you been? Assalamu alaikum wa Yes. Yes. Okay. Allah لا يحب الظالمين. Allah does not love those who are oppressive. And this is what where we differ with the Christians of the modern day. You know, modern Christian theology says God loves everyone. 
Jesus died for our sins and all of these lies. And our version of Allah's love is not that Allah loves everyone. Allah explicitly says to us, some people he does not love. No. Allah does not love some people. <laughs> In Allah, la yuhib. Allah does not love people who are arrogant, who are oppressive. Man kana khawanan athima, treacherous, liars, cheaters. Sin. Allah does not love such people. And so there are levels of love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for his slaves. And then there is the highest level. And those Allah loves, the highest of all, he uses his name Al-Wadud. This is why Al-Wadud, this name of Allah, the loving, it only came in the Quran how many times? 29. Sorry? 29. 29. Uncle has overestimated Al-Wadud. Much less. Single digits. Twice. Okay. The first one I mentioned. Did I mention? I don't think I mentioned. Where did the Al-Wadud come? وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الْوَدُودِ In which surah? Surah Al-Buruj. That's the first. Second one? It's a more tricky one. إِنَّ رَبِّ رَحِيمٌ وَدُودِ Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. The cash prizes are here. Bismillah ya Ahmed. Bismillah ya Ahmed. Jazakallah khair. إِنَّ رَبِّ رَحِيمٌ وَدُودِ Surah Hud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um, on, the, on the tongue of his prophet, uh, he tells his people, seek the forgiveness of Allah and return to him. Indeed, Allah is forgiving and loving. Wadud. It only came twice in the Quran. Allah is very loving. How come it only came twice? Because Allah's name, Ar-Rahim, it encompasses some love. Right. Every name of Allah, but Ar-Rahim, the mercy of Allah, encompasses a meaning of love. But Wadud is for very exclusive people. Who are the people who deserve this name Al-Wadud? And what is it that will make us people who deserve this special love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is what we are going to explore in today's lesson. Before I answer this question, I want to explain to you this passage that I just recited to you. Allah talks about the love of Allah in Surah Al-Baqarah. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ he talks about a type of shirk that many people don't know about. Shirk means to make something equal to God, equal to Allah. This is shirkul mahabba. Allah says some people, they love others equal to their love of Allah. But true believers, وَالَّذِينَ amanu, أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ Their love for Allah is greater than all else. It eclipses everything else. It encompasses everything else. And how does that love of Allah show? Is if anything else in this world comes between them and their creator, they push it to the side. Whether it's a spouse, whether it's a job, whether it's a business idea. What happens to us? We get tempted. Our love of wealth distracts us. We get the op a business opportunity that's actually quite dodgy. It's actually quite suspicious, quite dubious. We know it might be haram or it is haram. But our love and our greed and our desire for the gold, the gold coin is greater than our desire for our creator. So we push aside our values and we take the business opportunity. There's somebody you meet at work, somebody you meet at school, at college, at university. You end up messaging each other. You end up talking to each other. You end up you know, liking one another. But then eventually, your interest in this person and your desire to be with this person is greater than your love of Allah. So you are willing now to cross the red line, to push aside the commandments of Allah, the guidelines of Allah. Because your desire to be with this person right now and that feeling, that good tingly sensation you get when you are with them is greater for you and for me than being in the company of Allah. So we prefer them in that moment. And so many of us fall into this, the shirk of mahabba, that we end up loving things, people, objects, ideas, careers, etc., equal to or more than Allah. And this is such a dangerous form of shirk, to fall into this. Of course, falling into this, it does not make you a kafir, it does not make you a disbeliever, but of course, start worshipping something, that's another thing entirely. Start making dua to something or someone, that's another thing entirely. But that natural sensation of love. Why do people love? Why do we love? Whether it's loving a person, profession, an object. Why do we love something? Who can give me some clues? 
Because love is a human emotion. Non-Muslims and Muslims all experience this. So it doesn't matter who you can ask, we can collectively understand why do we love a thing or a person? Yes? Okay, there's a benefit to you, it gives you something in return. Why else do we love something? Sometimes we love something and it's destructive to us. <laughs> well, we still love it anyway. Why do we love? Why do we desire? Yes. It makes you feel happy. It gives you a feeling of happiness. What else? Yes. It gives you a sense of purpose. What else? Makes you feel important. Status, prestige. Sometimes people don't love money because they love money. But they love money because it buys them things that makes them feel important, prestige, status. Actually, their love is not of money, it's of status. Sorry? Say again? Respect. You love something because you receive or because you respect. Sometimes you love something because of the whispers of shaitan. You desire. You just desire, they say, al mamnu'u marghub. The forbidden is always desirable. If I came here and I put this bottle of water and I said, there's something inside my thobe, you can't have it. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but you can't have it. Because the younger children will straight away want it, right? The forbidden is desirable. The more it's covered, the more it's forbidden, sometimes the more desire one has for it. Sometimes we, we love this world and we dislike death, but why do we love this world? Huh? Is the fitna? Yes? Yes. Okay, you put effort into it. There is a sweetness, there is an enjoyment, there is a pleasure when you are with something or someone that you love. Sometimes that is something we grow up with, depending on the environment you are in. Sometimes it's something you develop at a later age. You develop the desire for something or someone. A certain type of thing or a certain type of person. When you are with this thing, when you achieve this thing, you realize that love is actually very short-lived. That happiness that you feel is temporary. The problem is, when it comes to the love of Allah, we do not physically meet Allah until the afterlife. So we have to wait to be in the companionship of our beloved. And yet, in this world, the best way to develop the love of Allah, if you feel in your heart, I don't love Allah, I don't love Allah. I prioritize everything over Allah. My meetings come before my salah. And my homework comes before my salah. My job comes before my salah. I love all of these things more than I love to meet Allah every day. What do I do? This is my crisis. I do not love Allah. If you sit with yourself and you feel this, Allah has given you the recipe to develop the love of Allah in this passage in Surah Al-Baqarah. Before he talks about the love of Allah, there's a whole ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about his creation. In the creation of the heavens and the earth. And the ships that sail in the seas. And the rain that falls from the sky. Here are the signs are something to think about for people of a sound heart. This next verse, and there are people who love Allah, they love things more than Allah. What, what is the link between the two verses? These two ayahs. If you want to develop the love of Allah, and you want to love Him more than anything else, you need to start falling in love with His creation. And you need to start appreciating the blessings He gave you in His creation. Our love for our parents, partly because they did so much for us. Nobody did more for us more than our mothers. Nobody gave us more unconditional love than our mothers. As we see the effects of someone's love and their, their, the things they have gifted us out of no request of our own, we begin to love them more and more. Similarly, if we want to develop the love of Allah, we have to start appreciating His blessings, small and large, the seen and the unseen. One of the greatest sunnahs of the Prophet وسلم, that is lost on us today, it's not practiced anymore, is the sunnah of reflecting on the creation of Allah. I've said it before, but I will say it again and I will say it till the dying, my dying day. 
the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam spent so much time alone in the wilderness, in a cave with sheep. This is how he grew up. The Prophet sallallahu his profession growing up, he used to look after sheep. He used to took, take a flock of sheep and he used to be in the middle of nowhere in the desert looking at the stars, looking at the moon, looking at the animals, alone by himself, the sound of silence in his ears, the smell, you know, the smell of nature in his nose and he's thinking and reflecting about the creation of Allah and the blessings Allah has given us. In Surah Al-Rahman, when Allah reminds us every verse, فَبِأَيِّ How many blessings of Allah will you reject and deny? He keeps showing us, everywhere you look, Allah has done something for you which you don't deserve. From the oxygen you breathe, to the heart beating inside your chest, to the white blood cells fighting disease, to the eyes that show you colors, people large and small. Every inch of your body is a gift from Allah. But the thing is, we don't realize that we have been gifted this. Every inch of the world around us is a gift from Allah, but we don't realize this is all a gift for us. Because we become desensitized, we become used to it. We think, oh, Adi, water, yeah, every day, I drink water every day. Who drinks water thinking about how this water reached this bottle? Allah sent rain from the sky. How the clouds developed, how they formed, how the water fell, how it went into the dam, how it was filtered, and how it was processed to reach this bottle. We don't know, so we just drink, glug, 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 glug. And never we say, Alhamdulillah. To reach and develop the love of Allah, we have to develop a love for His blessings and an appreciation for what He has given us. If we don't do that, we'll never love Allah. We will live life like zombies. We will live life on autopilot. The real lover of Allah is the one whom every moment they are saying, amazing. I didn't deserve this. Look what Allah gave me. Look what Allah gave me. Look how amazing is, is my creator. And this, look how amazing is my creator, is constantly on their lips. When you appreciate this, but to appreciate this, you need some time to yourself. It's hard. It's hard because of these devices that we have. They don't leave us alone. Never are you alone. Before humanity, you know, we're sitting in a waiting room, 30 minutes, you're waiting for something, you're by yourself. You're traveling from one place to another on your camel for 10, 15, 20 days. You're by yourself. Nobody's bothering you. No notifications. No, you have time to yourself. Today, we don't have time to ourselves. So little do we reflect on what Allah gave us. In fact, the moment we open our phone and we go to Facebook, we go to Instagram, TikTok, what are we looking at? What Allah didn't give us, but he gave somebody else. Look at that car. That dessert place. Oh, look at that. Mashal. Oh, look where they are. Morocco, Spain. No. You are constantly exposed to what you don't have. So you increase in ingratitude to Allah and you start to dislike your creator. The love of Allah comes from appreciating the handiwork of Allah. This is what Allah is showing us. In this verse in Surah Al-Baqarah. And when you love someone, when you love you start to follow. You don't even realize. How many children here? You two boys. Boy with the red shirt, red Adidas shirt. What football team do you support? La ilaha illallah. It's okay. Sheikh, we'll let, him, we'll, let him, we'll let him off. He said Manchester City. Inshallah. Insha we don't apply capital punishments in the masjid. Okay. Who's your favorite football player? Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo. Where's the loyalty to City? Ah, khalas, no problem. Okay. So whose t-shirt are you wearing today? Is there a name on the back? Huh? Ronaldo's name on the back. You see this, gentlemen? When you love someone, you want to follow them. You want to wear what they wear, walk what they walk, play like they play. This is, this is the living evidence. This is why after this verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, three verses later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about people who followed other people blindly that they loved and they led them down the wrong path. Because there will come a day, everybody's following someone, whether you like it or not, you love and you follow someone on this earth, 
or someone outside this earth. Because human beings, it is a human instinct to love and to follow. Those who followed other than Allah, who loved other than the Prophet of Allah, they continued to follow the, their beloved and they took them down the wrong path. And then on the Day of Judgment, they stand there and the ones they followed, the leaders will say, we don't know who these guys were. Our followers? I have no idea who these guys are. So I have nothing to do with them. Tabarra'a. They disassociated themselves from them. Cristiano Ronaldo, the Day of Judgment, will say, I have no idea who this young man is. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know who he is. I have no idea who he is. And this is it. Love leads to following. Inna al-muhibba liman yuhibbu muti'u. As the Arab poet used to say, if you loved, if you really loved, you would be following them. And this is why the secret behind the ayah in Surah Ali Imran. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبَكُمُ اللَّهَ Oh, Muhammad, tell them, sallallahu alayhi wa If you really love Allah, then you have to follow me, and Allah will love you in return. It's not just a commandment. He's not saying, you must follow me. He's saying, if you really loved Allah, you would automatically find yourself following me. That is the nature of love. Love leads to following, leads to imitation, leads to obedience. And any love that doesn't lead there is a fake love. It's not a real love. You know, the pre-Islamic Arabs, classical Arabs, when they would start their love poetry, and these, these poems have been memorized by the Muslim scholars for centuries to preserve the Arabic language. The poem starts with a lover standing at the ruins of the house of his beloved. His beloved is not there in the house. The house is destroyed and he is standing there and reminiscing, remembering nostalgically the days when he used to see his beloved. أَمُرُّ بِالْدِّيَارِ دِيَارَ لَيْلَ أُقَبِّلُ ذَا الْجِدَارَ وَذَا الْجِدَارَ وَمَا حُبُّ الْجِدَارِ شَغَفْنَ قَلْبِي وَلَكِنْ حُبُّ مَنْ سَكَنَ دِيَارَ As the famous Majnoon Imr al-Qais used to say, I walk around the houses of Layla. And I'm kissing the walls of this house. And it is not that I'm in love with the walls, it's a piece of cement, but I am in love with the one who used to live in these walls. This is what love brings about in a person. It brings, makes you love everything that was touched by the beloved, every effect that was left behind by the beloved. Today, people tell me somebody here who had a parent who passed away the last couple of years, a mother or father that passed away. Yes, Sheikh, who passed away in your family? More than a couple of years, who passed away? May your father, may Allah bless you. Was he here in the UK? He was not. What reminds you? I was here when he passed. You were here. What are the things you do to remember your father? Your beloved? Yeah? Or what are the things that remind you of him? He remembers the memories, yes, going for a walk with his father. Maybe now, when he walks by himself, he remembers when he used to have a companion in his walk. This is what happens. When you, there is a beloved, when you love someone, you miss the traces that were left behind by this person. And when we love Allah, what did Allah leave behind for us in this earth? He's not here. What did he leave behind for us? Yes. He left behind his creation. Everything you see is a trace of Allah. It's the names of Allah in real life is everything you see. But there's one more thing Allah left behind, the closest possible way to reach him. Yes. The Prophet ﷺ, there's something, the Quran. What is the Quran? It is the words of Allah. Imagine, your father passed away, your mother passed away. May Allah grant all your parents a long life. Say, Ameen. Ameen. And when they pass away, you find that they left some letters in a closed box inside your cellar. A series of letters addressed to you, dear son, dear daughter. And in those letters, they have left behind the advice from their whole life. What will you do with these letters? Will you throw it in the bin? You'll we'll frame it on the wall, right? You'll keep them in a safe place, right? Every time you remember your father, your mother, you'll go back to read these letters. Do you know what is the Qur'an? أُبَلِّغُكُمْ رِسَالَاتِ رَبِّي وَأَنَا لَكُمْ نَاصِحٌ أَمِينٌ As the Prophet said in the Qur'an, 
it is a letter from Allah to you. Allah left a letter for you. There's a letter addressed to you and to me. Those are his words. Allah may not be here physically, but he left with us the closest thing possible to the company of Allah is to be in the company of the Quran. Because when you recite the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to you. If you want to develop the love of Allah, get used to developing the love for his words. Anybody who has no connection with the words of Allah, how can they have a connection to Allah? The Prophet ﷺ sent a small group of people on an expedition. And he sent amongst them one man and he made him the leader of that expedition. And the leader is also the leader of Salah. That's why our Imam is our general and our Shaykh and our minister as well. The leader in Salah is a leader in all matters. And so this man, he was left, he was leading Salah. And every time he prayed Salah, he read the same surah. Anybody know what surah did he read? Yes? Surah Al-Ikhlas. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Every single time. You know if Shaykh Muhammad Ali did this every single time? Maybe you wouldn't give a five-star rating for Masjid Al-Furqan. I need to change the station. You know, I need some variety. Okay. Every time he's reading Surah Al-Ikhlas. So they went back and they complained to the Prophet The Prophet didn't say anything. He said, go bring him. Let me ask him, why did you do this? He brought the man. Why did you do this? The man said, لِأَنَّهَا صِفَةُ Rahman, Because it is the description of the Most Merciful. فَأُحِبُّ And I love to recite something that describes Allah. Who loves, whoever loves Allah, we love to hear Allah being described to him. And there's nothing that describes Allah better than Allah himself. Those who love Allah, there's another secret to them. And that's the reason why I recited a long passage today. Who can tell me, what did that passage, what is the first ayah I recited today? Who can remember? Inna safa wal marwata min sha'a'irillah. When Allah is talking about the love of Allah, a few verses before that, He is talking about Safa and Marwa. Those who love Allah have a strange desire to go and visit His house. And the moment you see His house, you'll realize it is the greatest moment in your life, in your lived existence today. Not because it is a box, there's nothing special except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it and honored it as his house. It is just a marble floor. There's nothing special. But this is the floor that the prophets walked on. Well, not on the marble, on the sand. Underneath the marble. This is the place of the prophets of our beloveds. This is the, land, this is the house of our beloved, our creator. And because it is the house of our beloved, what are people doing at the walls of the Kaaba? They're crying. They are pulling. They are kissing. They are doing everything. And Why? Because of their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who love Allah, love his creation. Those who love Allah, love his messenger. Those who love Allah, love his speech. Those who love Allah, love his house. This is the summary. Now we're going to come to the second part. Allah's name, Al-Wadud. Only used twice in the Quran. And only used in a very, very specific context. Surah Al-Buruj. This is the context it was used in. Who can tell me what is Surah Al-Buruj about? Asba Ashabul Ukhdud. Anybody can tell me the story? Yes. Mm -hmm. A group of people who believed in Allah and their people rejected this belief from them. They were outcast. And because they rejected this belief, the people of that city, of that area, they dug a huge ditch, a huge hole. They threw these people in and they burned them alive. This is the story. In these verses in Surah Al-Buruj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a list of his names, one after the other, and he has not done that in this juz other than this part of Surah Al-Buruj. I swear by the sky with its constellations. And I swear by the day that is promised, وَشَاهِدٍ وَمَشْهُودٍ 
and I swear by the witness and what was witnessed. قُتِلَ أَصْحَابُ الْأُخْدُودِ The people of the ditch were murdered. النَّارِ ذَاتِ الْوَقُودِ A blazing fire full of fuel, coal and stones. إِذْ هُمْ عَلَيْهَا قُعُودِ And there were people sitting, watching and enjoying the sight of the believers burning alive. وَهُمْ عَلَى مَا يَفْعَلُونَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ شُهُودٍ And they are witnessing and watching what is happening to the believers. وَمَا نَقَمُوا مِنْهُمْ They had no issue with these men, these people who were in the ditch. إِلَّا أَن يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ There was only one problem. Why do you believe in Allah? الْعَزِيزِ الْحَمِيدِ the most mighty, the one who is worthy of praise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing a people who are suffering and burning alive. Why? Why, why would they do that? Why would they give their life for Allah? Because of their love of Allah. This is the secret. How many people are there in today's world today? In the north of India, being slaughtered because they are wearing a hijab. In Uyghur in China, being put into concentration camps to reprogram them. How many people in Algeria died under the French occupation out of their tawheed of Allah? How many people are burning alive, being chopped to pieces, being tortured, and nobody here knows a single name from these people's names? We don't know them. We have no clue who they are. Their whole life was a life of misery, burning, being killed, being tortured until the day that they died. Suratul Buruj is a story about these people exactly. The people who suffer and sacrifice for the sake of Allah. There was a story in the news about 30 years ago. And this happens often that there was a young man who needed a kidney transplant. And because of the blood type, it was impossible to find any match, anybody to donate this, their kidney to this person. And this person's father had one kidney. And he knew if he donated this kidney, that means he will take his own life. But out of the love of his son, he gave a part of his body so his son could live and he let himself die. How many parents there are in this room who would give their life for their child, who would give their heart for their child? Take my kidney, take my arm, take my heart, take, my, take it. How many parents think like that? The greatest form and expression of love, the greatest, is sacrifice. And we are now coming to the month of Qurbani the month of sacrifice. And that is why the Prophet of Allah who is described as the greatest lover of Allah, Khalilur Rahman, is who? Ibrahim. Ibrahim and how do you know that Ibrahim السلام, is the closest to Allah of all the Prophets? And the greatest, and he's named the father of the Prophets. How do we know? What is it that made his love of Allah so special? Is the S word, Sacrifice. This is today's lesson. If you would like to reach the level of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loving you more than he loves any of his creation, you have to be willing to sacrifice. This is the lesson in Eid al-Adha. Ya bunayya inni ara fil manami anni adbahuk. My son, I saw in a dream, Allah revealed to me that I am slaughtering you. Slaughtering you. قَالَ يَا أَبَتِ إِفْعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ My father, do as you are commanded. Do you know what this shows? This child loves Allah. He is willing to sacrifice himself for the command of Allah. Himself. Why would this child grow up as someone who loves Allah? This is for the parents. If you want your children to love Allah, they have to watch you sacrificing for the sake of Allah. 
Tell me, tell me, what did Ismail Alayhisam see growing up? What did he see his father doing? He saw his father building the Kaaba. Before that, what sacrifice did his father make? Yes. He left his newborn baby in the middle of the desert. Why? Because Allah ordered him to. He sacrificed his most loved ones. He left them here because Allah told him to. What else did Ismail Alayhisam see from his father? Building the Kaaba, sweating in the heat of the desert. If your children will see you sweat for the sake of Allah and sacrifice the sake of Allah and stay awake at night for the sake of Allah and tire for the sake of Allah, they will love Allah just as you loved Allah. This is the lesson. Ismail alayhi salam, don't underestimate this young boy. He's ready to give himself because of the command of Allah. Ibrahim alayhi salam is about to kill his son, about to slaughter his son. At whose command? At Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command. The journey of Hajj and the month of Dhul Hijjah and the story of Qurbani is the story of a person who loved Allah so much he was willing to sacrifice the thing most beloved to him. Not himself, his child. Because parents love their children more than they love themselves. A parent will take a bullet for their child. A parent will give their kidney for their child. But they won't do that for their sister or their brother. <laughs> Only for their children. And this is why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about his love in the Quran, when he says in Surah Al-Buruj, Al Wadud, who can tell me the ayah before it? Inna batasha rabbika lashadid. The punishment of Allah is severe. Innahu huwa yubdi'u wa yu'id. He will he creates things from scratch and he will return them to him on the day of judgment. Wahuwa al ghafur al wadud. When Allah talks about Al-Wadud, right after he's talking about bringing them back on the Day of Judgment. Because in this life, these people burning to death, they did not see love. They only saw pain. But when they are returned to Allah, they are going to meet Al-Wadud. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ said, من أحب لقاء الله Whoever loves to meet Allah أحب الله لقاء Allah loves to meet them Can you imagine Allah loves to meet you If you desire to meet Him Can you imagine this Can you imagine that some one of the Prophet's companions the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asks him, or rather, he asks the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Mata saha? When is the day of judgment?" The Prophet asks him, "Mada adat talaha? What did you prepare for it? Don't ask me when it is. What are you ready? What did you prepare for the day of judgment? I can ask you the question. Are you ready for the day of judgment if it came now?" And this man just says one thing: "Uhibu Allah wa Rasulah. I love Allah and His Messenger." The Prophet gives beautiful response: "Al mar'u." You will be with the one that you love. The people who are burnt alive, who give their life for Allah, who die jihad fi sabilillah, who give themselves for Allah, they are the greatest lovers of Allah and there is nobody like them. And this is the secret behind the question that people ask all the time. If Allah loves me, then why? Why does he test me? If Allah loves me, then why doesn't He just give me a good time? Why doesn't He just give me enjoyment? Why does Allah test me if He loves me? The number of times I've been asked this question. The Prophet sallallahu asks, answers this question himself. Inna ashadda nasi bala anil anbiya. The people with the worst of tests were the Prophets. Thumma al fal amthal. And then the greatest of people have the worst of tests. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ إِذَا أَحَبَّ عَبْدًا ابْتَلَاهَ Because Allah, when He loves someone, He tests them. Because only by passing the test do you raise in your ranks on the Day of Judgment. Only by passing the test will you get your deeds forgiven. Only by jumping through the hoops of fire do you avoid the final fire. Allah tests the ones He loves. 
Because the ones who had the worst of tests, who died for the sake of Allah, how does Allah describe them? وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتِ Don't think that they really died a death. بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ They are alive with Allah being provided. The most beloved people to Allah are the ones who sacrifice for His sake. We have to really ask ourselves the question. Today Islam has become so convenient to us. What have we given for Allah's sake? What have we done, sacrificed, sweated for His sake? This is the sign of our love of Allah, nothing else. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He gives us the, uh, uh, a test. If you want to know, am I someone who loves Allah, yes or no? He gives us a test. I'm going to tell you the test. Surah At-Tawbah. قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ Tell them, O Muhammad, sallallahu If your fathers and your sons and your brothers and your spouses وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ اِقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةً تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنْ وَمَسَاكِنَ تَرْضَوْنَهَا أَحَبُّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِهِ فَتَرَبَّصُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ it's called the eight over three rule. If you love eight things more than three things, you are doomed. Allah says, tell them, O Muhammad wasallam. If you love your fathers and your sons and your brothers and your spouses and your families, and money that you worked hard to earn, and business that you wouldn't want to lose, and houses that you love to enjoy, if these eight things are more beloved to you than Allah and His Messenger and struggling for His sake, then wait. Wait. The punishment of Allah is coming for you. Because the greatest punishment of Allah is not a lightning bolt from the sky. No, that is the least. The greatest punishment of Allah is to be far, to be distant from Allah. This is the worst punishment. Ya Rabbi, in ata minka al wuddu fal kullu hayinun wa kullu alladhi fawqa al turabi turabu. As the Arab poet said, O oh Allah, if I receive love from you, everything becomes small for me. Because everything above the sand will eventually be sand as well. Allah in this verse describes the most beloved things to every human family, money, business, homes, and houses. And if we are willing to sacrifice, if these things distract us from Allah, then they become an enemy to us. Can you imagine that your spouse, your wife, your husband or your child can become an enemy to you? Yes. Who can tell me the verse from the Quran that tells us this? Fitna. Allah says, your wealth and your children are a fitna, a test. And elsewhere, They can become an enemy to you. Be careful. Never let anything come between you and your beloved. And in fact, the more we wait to see Allah, the more we should look forward to seeing Him. And we know that the Prophet ﷺ, he informed us. What are the signs of somebody who loves Allah? We're going to end with this. إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَىٰ إِذَا أَحَبَّ عَبْدًا نَادَىٰ جِبْرِيلٍ If Allah loves you, He calls Jibreel. إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَحَبَّ فُلَانًا فَأَحِبُّوهُ And He tells Jibreel, O oh Jibreel, I love this person, so you have to love him as well. So Jibreel loves this person. ثُمَّ يُنَادِي جِبْرِيلُ فِي السَّمَاءِ Then the angel Jibreel calls out in the heavens. إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَحَبَّ فُلَانًا فَأَحِبُّوهُ he calls out in the heavens, O angels, Allah loves this person, so you better love him as well. فَيُحِبُّهُ أَهْلُ السَّمَاءِ Everyone in the heavens now loves this person. 
وَيُوضَعُ لَهُ الْقَبُولُ فِي أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ And then the people on the earth start to love this person as well. This is what Allah says when He says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ سَيَجَعَلُوا لَهُمُ الرَّحْمَانُ وُدَّا those who believed and did good deeds, Allah will place in their hearts love for each other because they loved Allah. When Allah talks to Musa alayhi salam, and he's telling him, you were thrown in the sea, you grew up in the palace, you ran away, you killed somebody, all the difficult things he went through, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sneaks in there a word, وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً مِّنِّي وَلِتُصْنَعْ عَلَىٰ عَيْنِي all of this I did, O Musa, because I love you. I love you, so you were thrown in the sea. I love you, so you grew up with the tyrant. I love you, so you killed someone by mistake. I love you, so you walked in the hot desert for months to Madian. I love you, so you left your family behind. I love you, so you worked in somebody's house for 10 years. For 10 years, milking cows and cleaning the house and serving. 10 years. All of this, Musa alayhi salam. Because I was preparing you to struggle and sacrifice for my sake. If you could not sacrifice a day of comfort, a day of air conditioning, if you could not sacrifice one evening, how could you become prophet of Allah? Those who love Allah are the ones who sacrifice for his sake. And so if we love Allah, we have to ask ourselves today, what am I willing to sacrifice for his sake? لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ You will never become righteous until you give away the things that are dearest to you. Because when you give them away, Allah becomes the dearest to you. I'll end with one hadith. The Prophet ﷺ in his house, an animal is slaughtered. An animal is cooked, whether it was lamb, etc. And it was given away. Everything was given away except the lamb shoulder because the Prophet ﷺ loved to eat lamb shoulder. And he came and he asked Aisha radiallahu anha, Oh Aisha, what is left of the lamb? She said, everything is gone except the shoulder. He said, no Aisha, no. We have everything else. We don't have the shoulder. Because what I have, my asset, is what I gave for the sake of Allah. That's my assets. Baby, today people calculate their net worth, how many houses, how much bank balance. Your greatest asset is not the things that you own, it's the things that you gave away, that you sacrificed for the sake of Allah. Those who love Allah, Allah is waiting to meet them. وَصَلِ اللَّهُمَّ وَسَلِّمْ وَبَارِكَ عَلَىٰ سَيِّدِنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَىٰ آلِي وَصَحْبِ أَجْمَعِينَ May Allah make all of us of those who love Allah and those who receive the love of Allah. May Allah protect us from His wrath and make us of those who meet Him when we all meet each other. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.